guys, welcome back to the Purpose of Money podcast. I'm super excited. This is the 100th episode of the show, and I am joined today by a very special guest, my husband, Rudolph S. Garnet. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so we're going to switch it up today and we are going to allow Rudolph to be the host and I am going to be the guest. Now, bear with me. I'm a little nervous. I have literally never had anyone else interview me on my show and especially not my husband. So <laughs> let's see how this goes. All right, Rudolph, take it away. So uh, let, let me get this straight. So I get to get on a podcast with you and ask you anything that I want to talk about? Yes, preferably PG. This is a kid-friendly show. Okay. All right. And you're nervous. For what reason? Because I've never been interviewed by anyone else on my show, and I have no idea what you're going to ask. Okay, that's fair. I mean, that's that's a good thing for my listeners. Oops, I meant your listeners to, <laughs> to kind of lean in on. All right, so I got I got three things on my docket today. Okay. One, I want to talk through your growth as an entrepreneur. Okay. Two, finances and relationships, specifically ours. So we're going to put all our business out in the streets for a little bit. And then three, more, a little bit more of a controversial topic is, are we doing a disservice to our boys when it comes to financial awareness? Oh, okay. So th those are the three topics, and we have four hours to talk about it here, so <laughs> we should be good. <laughs> I do not think you're going to graciously stay on here for four hours. I'm just so. saying, it's gonna, sis, it's gonna be a very intense conversation. Okay, so as an icebreaker, okay. I like to do this on my team. I okay. like to start with the "Would you rather?" Okay, purpose, purpose of money edition. Okay. All right, and the first "Would you rather?" Would you rather have tons of money with no free time, or tons of free time with very little money? Oh, number two, of course. Tons of Why? free time with very little money because time is something you can't get back. It is the most invaluable resource we have, most valuable resource we have. And I would love more control over my time. Okay. Interesting. What's your answer? So, time, because that's once you give somebody your time, I think that is that is the the biggest show of grace to somebody because that's something you're never gonna get back. And at times, we need to be more selective okay. with how we spend our time. So okay, that's fair. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, your first, your first topic, your growth as an entrepreneur. Okay, let's go. Your 100th episode. Yes. <laughs> what do you think so far? I love it. I mean, one of the reasons I started this show, shout out to Danielle Desire, was to be able to build community and talk to more women entrepreneurs and mommypreneurs. And that's working. I get positive feedback from the show all the time. And I have some male listeners too. So shout out to those who are guys listening to the show. I definitely think God works in mysterious ways because every time I think about ending the show or taking a long break from the show, I get another testimony, I get another comment, I get another review, and then I keep going. So, so far, so good. It's working out. Let's go. So far, so good. So okay, far. so the question on the table, if you think back to your first ever episode, mm -hmm. what advice would you give your younger self about anything? Entrepreneurship, podcasting, life, you um, name it. You fill in the bank. But what would you tell your younger self going back to your first podcast episode? First podcast episode, definitely watch what you say. I've had people totally quote me <laughs> in previous episodes. And my mindset on some issues has changed. But I think that's okay. I think that's natural. Uh, we as people progress, especially in our finances. So it's totally okay that my opinion changed. But just know that people might refer to it. Uh, because the internet is forever, and so are those original episodes. But I would also tell myself to decide on seasons from the beginning because the pressure of trying to put out content every week forever is a lot, and it takes time, and you want 
to fine tune your product as you grow. And I don't think the pressure of having to kick out too much content when you're multitasking mom and job and other things in life is the best pressure to put on yourself. So I probably would have started with fewer shows, shorter seasons, but maybe had more seasons by now. But that's okay. We are still at the 100th episode and in season five. And I'm very proud of that. So how do you go about, I guess, how do you go about selecting the topics that you want to talk to your listeners about? I actually asked the listeners. So I've had clients suggest topics that we should talk about. I've had guests approach me to be on the show. I still like to focus on building wealth and real estate. So obviously when someone reaches out to me and they are in those two spaces, I'm more open to having them on the show. But one of the things I did in season four that I'd never done before is I actually had a ma- my first male guest. And then I decided, you know what? My audience could use information that men have to share as well. And it's totally okay if it comes from someone of the opposite sex. So I've had more males on the show since. And I really like that because some of the discussions we've had and the perspectives they brought to the show have been really interesting and appreciated by listeners. Well, it was, it's a stark contrast from what you started before because you was very, you was very tight on for a woman, by a woman, for a woman. <laughs> this so is how'd true. you come, how'd you come off of that? <laughs> I, I came across a really good story that I thought my listeners needed to know. Shout out to Justin Redrick, the author of Bars to Bitcoin. I read his book where he talks about how he went from prison to a gentleman who got out and made a difference in his community and invested in Bitcoin. And I thought that my listeners should hear that story because throughout everything he went through, he still persevered and he still continues to persevere. He's even pivoted from Bitcoin to coaching. So it is definitely a real entrepreneurship story of how you can transition despite what happens in your life. Okay. All right. So a a bit of moment to be vulnerable here. What scares you the most of entrepreneurship? Oh, goodness. Failing. But I think I have a safe fear of failure. I don't think about it too much. I just keep going. And it is it is positive to fail regularly, meaning make mistakes that you learn from and don't repeat them again. So I do have a fear of not being successful as an entrepreneur, but I've had multiple years now to test out different things, to grow my team, and really feel more and more confident about what I'm doing. So even though I still continue to make mistakes, I also continue to grow. And I know that I have a knack for making money. Every time I worry about the next financial obligation that I have in the business, something comes along, whether it's the next deal, invoice paid, or next client. And so that is the optimism and just abundant mindset that I choose to continue to keep in the business, even though I know that entrepreneurship can be wacky. I mean, I talked to a friend today who's Business started at six figures when she first started, and now it's having a tough time because some companies are holding back or paying late, and that impacts her bottom line. And so when I hear stories like that, I get a little nervous, but it doesn't discourage me. I just have to prepare myself for if I see myself going that way, that I can reach out to my circle for ideas and ways to get through it. Okay. So that that's the first chapter. How do you feel? Oh, not bad. I think you yeah, did a great okay. job. You asked good right. questions and none of them were too hard for me. <laughs> okay. So now let's get let's get into the T now a bit. So finances and relationships. Okay. Okay. Spill so it. people people often say when it comes to money relationships, you have to run your household like a corporation. Okay. You agree? Yes. That can be okay. an effective way to run your household. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then when you look at the C suite, there's there's other people that matter, but the two people that matter the most are the CEO, okay, the chief executive officer, mm-hmm. and by definition, it's the highest ranking person in the company, okay, ultimately responsible for making manager decisions. Mm-hmm. And then right after the CEO is the CFO, the oh. chief financial officer, okay, senior executive responsible for managing the financial actions of a company. Mm-hmm. I agree. In, in this Ascarne enterprise, what role do you play? Oh, I definitely play play the CFO. 
And I think you play the CEO role as the head of our household. I am more than happy to have you lead our family and what we do. But when it comes to the finances, I tend to take on the role of paying the bills and networking to make sure nothing's forgotten and scheduling things that you probably would never remember to do. (laughs) Me, personally. So this is an attack on me right now. No, this okay. is not an attack on you, but this is, we said we're talking about how we handle our finances. So I'm just letting okay. you know, we, I am the CFO, you are the CEO, but okay. we work together, right? right. Like we talk right. about our finances well, together. We'll, we'll get there in a little bit. So if you, if you as the CFO could change one money habit about me, the CEO, what would that be? Ooh, I would rather you not use the amex as much as you do <laughs> why the amex chuckling? as much as i do okay yes, go yes. on what do you mean by that well i mean, I mean it's it's just... all, that's all free money right i mean <laughs> <laughs> no so you, mean? i mean you that is your go-to car that's literally what you use to pay for everything which can be a gift and a curse sometimes right because then i have to backtrack not only the expenses coming out of the multiple bank accounts, because we budget with multiple bank accounts, but then also make sure the capital is there to cover the Amex. And I feel like sometimes because it's your go-to card, you're just like, Oh, it'll, it'll all settle out later. (laughs) And, um, but but there, there are points to be made on using the Amex point. Like if you're going to have a large purchase, why not get the benefit of having Amex points come with that purchase? I agree with that but i also believe never go after points if you are going to be accumulating interest so there is a balance i think in our finances yes we do get a lot of amex points and we use them that's one of the things some people can't say they do but we use them we use them to travel we've enjoyed free vacations thanks to the american express card and additional benefits when we travel because sometimes they will give hotel credit or some other special feature but they're not sponsoring this episode so let's <laughs> I just, just i just find that i find general. it hilarious but we, could, when we see the breakdown of our monthly ex, uh, expenses for amex i'm usually not in the lead as far as dollar wise uh, when, we, when we separate the cards and it says what's charged to my account versus what's charged to your account your nine times out of ten your amount is higher i have more transactions okay. yes i may have, have more transactions <laughs> But the dollar amount is higher on your end. So don't come from Because I <laughs> use the American Express card specifically for large purchases and then pay them off. So we use the card differently and that's perfectly okay. But that's a part of why you'll have more transactions because you use it for everything. And I mm. will use it for the larger purchases that we have. Okay. What'd you say? What's the What's my one habit? that I'll change about you? Is that what you asked me? Well, okay. I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> the The one thing I'll change about you is your inability to sit down somewhere. Oh and I've told goodness. you this plenty of times. Yeah. There's there's a trip coming up in August and you're already planning the trip after that, after that, after that. Which again, all when I hear these things, all I see is just dollar signs kind of racking up in my head. But one of the things I do admire about you is your ability to make things that I find, I may have found as far reaching, you tend to make it attainable. So I was like, you know, you know, we're going, we're going to go here for vacation. I was like, well, how are you going to afford it? So you, you said it's already paid for it because we've been budgeting for it for the past couple of weeks. And I think, I think you and that mindset is something that I didn't really have growing up, but it kind of make it seems like, you know, don't focus on a big number right now, but focus on what you can save on a weekly basis. Just worry about that. And then by the time you look up, the, the money for that trip or the money for that purchase already there. So that's that's one of the things you do well. But I still think that at times you need to sit down as far as not being everywhere and anywhere. That's that's a fair assessment. I do travel a lot and I don't always travel with you. Sometimes I travel by myself for the business, but I do also appreciate traveling with the family. So that's key. But we have our differences in that, you know, I am a person who thrives from traveling and I love being in different places and part of the reason I chose a career where you travel and live abroad is because that's what I desired to do since seventh grade but I do agree that with a home and two kids sometimes it helps to be home more 
And I am working on that balance, but I, at a minimum, I want to go somewhere every quarter. I just, I need something to look forward to. And I love spending holiday vacations since now we do have to focus on traveling when the kids are off school versus traveling whenever. And I try to maximize that. So we definitely spend a lot more holidays away from home and not necessarily with other families, sometimes in other countries with ourselves. (laughs) So okay. that's true. That's fair. All right. Time for another would you rather question. Okay. Would you rather go back in time and fix your biggest funny mistake or look into the future to find out where you end up? Oh, man. That is a tough one because I would love insight to the future, but I kind of anxiously want to see how it unravels. But I would never want to correct my biggest money mistake because I know that made me who I am and I know that contributed a lot to what I do now because even when you have the blueprint because my dad gave me rich dad poor dad at 16 and I read it and I definitely followed a lot of the advice I still made mistakes and I just learned from those and you document and you set up things in your path so you don't let it happen again like missing a bill and then deciding to schedule all my bills on my calendar so I get alerts before they're due. That's definitely a cause and effect situation because I missed a payment. I put my bills on the calendar. So I wouldn't necessarily want to take back a money mistake. And I definitely would love a little more clarity on where we're going. So I I would rather that. You, you, You did not answer the question at all i would rather (laughs) i would rather a glimpse into the future the glimpse of the future okay let's just say for argument's sake you did pick the biggest money mistake okay what do you think is your biggest money mistake when it relates to our relationship and fyi there is a right and wrong answer to this (laughs) (laughs) okay there's a right and wrong answer and i don't know what the answer is i'm sure it's gonna be something i paid for that you didn't agree with you're you're getting warm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's you're getting that's warm. Literally, that, that's, all that it that's, could be. That that's a that's a baseline answer. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, any more details behind that? Aquani? Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm definitely being put at the center of attention with no clues. But let me ask you a question: Is the money mistake? Um, do we both feel like it's a money mistake, or do you, <laughs> or do uh, only you feel like it's a money that's... mistake? That's an epic, an epic follow-up question. I think it was a money misunderstanding. Hmm. Yeah. It's and, a money misunderstanding. I wouldn't call it a mistake. Okay. And how long ago did this happen? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. Maybe like <laughs> two, three years ago. Oh, gosh. Oh, Look, yeah. <laughs> y'all, <laughs> my husband is stuck on the same money mistake that he continues it's not, it was, to... It's not a mistake. We said, we just said it wasn't a mistake. <laughs> it wasn't a mistake. So my husband is stuck on the same money decision oh, that, perfect word. that, that perfect he word. continues to enjoy on a, on a bi-weekly or no, a twice Bi-quarter. a week basis. It's a quarterly basis. A quarterly? I don't think we're talking about the same thing. Okay, we're not. Ahead. Okay, so... No, so but tell, tell me, <laughs> tell me what you think I'm talking about so that so, I can at least know what that is. So I thought you were talking about the decision to hire a chef. No, no, no. That's that. I mean that I, I I had an opinion about that. It was very strong, but I have since kind of came off of that decision. Okay. And now it's a it's a staple in our household. Okay. I was speaking more about the time when you like left the entire house and came back with an entire car without oh, a conversation. Yeah. 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 Remember no, that? that's that's not no, that's remember not that? fully true. I but how's that totally... not okay? Yes. Yes or no questions, Aquania. No. Nope. Did you leave the house? <laughs> In one car and come back in another. Yes. Okay. So how was that? How was that not a misunderstanding? Did we have? Okay. The other thing is no question. Did we have a conversation about said car? Yes. Really? We did. Did I not so we, ask you to go? So shop? we started lying. No, we're not. Right we're now? not lying. <laughs> Rudolph, your turn. Yes or no question? Did Aquania? I did. I ask you to go car shopping with me the week over the weekend. You said yes. You did. Yes. Okay, so when it was time to go car shopping, were you ready to go? I was not ready to go. Okay. Did you communicate to me that you did not want me to still go car shopping without you? Uh, but I, I'm confused. If we go back to <laughs> the setup question I gave you before, right? as far as the role that you play in this Garnet Enterprise, mm-hmm. you said 
very adamantly you play the CFO role. I do. So Do you think the, the purchase <laughs> of a five digit vehicle would be something a CEO should chime in on? Yes. So and you're in, in that in that same breath, when you go when you when you, you left this house, you purposely had all the attention to go to a car dealership. You sat with the salesman, I presume. You got in the car, I also presume. And then there was all this paperwork that came out. At what point in that journey where you was like, hey, maybe I should talk to my husband about this before I sign on dotted line? Oh, I did talk to my husband about getting a car. So let's talk about that. So <laughs> husband, dear, did I talk to you well prior to going to get a car about needing another car? Did we, did we have you're, you're missing, it? No, 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 you're missing, you're no, missing the no. point. We the gotta, point is being missed right now. No, the, the point is, I agree with you. We did not agree on the day of the purchase of the car to the <laughs> purchase of the car. But we had so many things we discussed prior to, like when I was on the phone with you to ap apply for the pre-approval loan for the car. What? And, yes. Fairy tale no, while you at no. this place. No, that is so true. I a remember. Quiet, you left the house in a car and you came back in another car. The first time I found out another car was purchased or being contemplated is when I went into the garage. That's not true. Because I applied for the pre-approval a week before and was on the phone with you about it. Because okay, because let's fair. be you're true. Dead. You're right. You're right. Before we bought the American Ford car that we ended up purchasing, I had done the pre-approval with the intent to get a Tesla, correct? Yes or no? Do you remember that? The was, first the time fuzzy. <laughs> the first time we discussed getting a Tesla was actually then, and it was because the dealership that I went to had a Tesla on the lot. And I remember sitting in the car when I was talking to you and I said, hmm, do you think I would actually get pre-approved for it? Can we even afford a Tesla? And that's when I filled out the online application on my phone with USAA for the car loan. I told you how much I was pre-approved for. And then we also had discussions about how my existing car was not going to pass inspection because that's literally, let's be clear. I didn't, for the listener's sake, I didn't just go buy a car because I wanted to. Uh, that's, that's what we, it sounds like We to me. had an existing vehicle <laughs> no. that was struggling to pass inspection the multiple times we took it in. And it was quite old, right? I think 10 to 13 years old. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So not not shiny, not a spring chicken. So, but I will admit that you were not present for the purchase. And that was definitely a ego-driven decision at the, in the moment, right? An ego-driven decision. E okay, yes. after yeah. after all these years, we're finally getting clarity. I mean, this. because I was upset with you. I we, we had a plan and we had a window. And then when it was time to go shopping, you were like in your sweats, like lollygagging around the house okay and an ego I, I was so you, i was so, upset i was in my so, feelings oh okay in your feelings so you left you because you i was lollygagging as you say you, 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 you left were, the house you had no intentions of purchasing a car <laughs> you, the same you day left the house <laughs> and he was like i'm going to do this and show him is that what you was doing like no what's the, no no not what a, was the no not a show what, him what, what was the, the the end game there get a car because I needed a car before my birthday when the car we had would no longer be drivable for inspection okay. purposes. And so, that was the only weekend, which I right. thought I had made clear right. to go car shopping. It okay. was literally the last mm -hmm. weekend we could okay. go car shopping. Okay. So, so in that, in that entire journey, you was like, hey, if I see something, I'm going to get it. And if he and he'll just have to do it. OK, here's another question. For no, because we went you, with wait, the wait, car wait, 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 wait. So here's another question for you. When you went through this whole thing, you never not once thought, hey, he might have a strong opinion about this. I, I did call you from the dealership, <laughs> first of all, at least once. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I felt like if in full transparency, I felt like you didn't care. Because if you cared, there are plenty of things that let let's let me start from the beginning. My husband's not a morning person. Okay. Fair. My husband is not a morning person. And there are things he will get up in the morning to do and he will get dressed to do and he will go do them proudly, right? You were not dressed anywhere near getting dressed to go to the dealership to look for a car. You just you're, didn't you're seem not, like you're, you're, a you're, you're painting. You're painting a story that is completely no. Perfect. I you, mean, you never made it. You never made it. You never came across that entire day as if 
hey, this is this is the this is the this is the decision that we have to do this now now. You get the impression like, oh, okay, I may go to Costco, I go to Target, <laughs> or I may go look at this car. <laughs> like, that's the way when you left the house, I thought it was like more in that vein as no. opposed to like I'm gonna be very <laughs> intentional and I'm gonna go out and buy a No, vehicle. no, we were clearly not on the same page. I don't okay. know I, I don't know about you, but I don't fill out pre approvals for cars and don't intend to buy one. Agreed, I don't think I've but ever done it, that. You did that a week <laughs> before. So really what would have what would have changed in sixteen hours later? The the inability to look for a car? Because I no, again no, no. Yes. What do you mean you, sixteen we, you hours? You probably you like I'm just saying there was nothing there was there was no compelling reason to buy a car in that vein except for, hey, I want to have this ego driven decision and make this thing right now to to show him. No. Is what I walked away with. No. I mean, that's what you heard, but that's not what I said. Okay. I, I said we had one weekend to buy the car. I had made plans for it to be that Saturday. Okay. You were not clearly on the same page. And I didn't understand when we were gonna buy a car if we didn't buy it that Saturday. Cause okay. our emissions registration everything expired i want to say like that tuesday that and, tuesday. and okay. i wasn't a little, a little I mean, dramatic but okay we'll, we'll go with we went on a saturday right and we knew the car was going to be out of legal status to drive that next week and i no. already knew i didn't have time to look for a car during the week so i don't know okay. i i don't i can't tell you what the right or wrong thing <laughs> is at this point because we you were not in the mindset to buy a car and i had already what, been determined to get a car because we needed one what would you advise your people that's listening it might be in a similar situation what would be your advice to them we definitely should have talked about it more because you didn't seem to have the same urgency i did to buy a okay, car so, and i okay. didn't communicate that well enough if you didn't have the urgency so definitely okay. communicating and then clearly communicating about it more afterwards because i had no idea you still felt so strongly who's, about who's this still bothered about that yeah I mean, it, only happened, it only happened on june 17 2014 yeah. some, 16, some, so. it happened in august but okay <laughs> um but yeah and i guess talking about it more and i will say like we've grown a lot for those who don't know i met my husband in college when i was like 19 and that was 20 years ago. So we have come a long way in our communication and in our relationship. But I, even even then, like this, this is not something we've done again. And we've definitely agreed to that. I do remember that. I remember after the car situation and we talked about it and I admitted to doing the wrong thing and getting it anyway. But I also said I wouldn't do something like that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of my visceral reaction to it. Okay, let's. No, because uh, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't right. I, at the end of the day, we have purchased several cars together. That is the only one. Well, technically, you got the Tesla by yourself, but we agreed to it. We knew it was happening. We budgeted for it. I were knew. Were you in town? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You took Rashad, and I took Rashad. So we both took our son <laughs> car shopping. But you know, by the time we did get the Tesla of your dreams, we were on a much different accord. We were in agreement, and I just said, "Hey, that'd be a great thing to do with your son." So, just the different. Tesla, the Tesla of my dreams, but you drive mostly. Yeah, right. well, it's okay. our, I didn't. I said your <laughs> dreams because I didn't know I wanted a Tesla, but now it. that I have okay. one, I want another okay. one. But. That's fair. <laughs> Okay, that's 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 the tea session okay. for today. We could we could agree to disagree on a bunch of things, but I think it was good to at least get that out. Mm -hmm. All right, the third stanza, the disservice to our boys. Okay. So when I'm when I'm with Paul and all of the guys, we sit around, we have these philosophical debates of whether or not our children are we're doing a disservice to our children as far as the way they're growing up versus the way that we grew up. Mm -hmm. And because I had a humble beginning, you had a humble beginning. Mm -hmm. I think collectively we have more of an appreciation for things that we can do financially. Okay. Or we more just so have more money. We can uh, do yeah, more things. Let's not there, sugarcoat there, it. We, we make, a, we make more an money appreciation. and your we mom, have more money. Like, your mom had limited resources, but she tried to do everything for you. So mm -hmm. it's not, I don't want to put it in a, in a quantity perspective. I think, you know, you, you try to focus on things that's important to the child and to yourself and you make that happen however that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's um, fair. But 
we both have to admit let me just as you I'm I don't want to interrupt what you're about to paint but I just want to be clear to the audience that we both came from single mom households and now we are a two parent household right so that's right. a distinction a two parent working household and that's a huge difference okay how would you I guess if you had to get into your boys heads mm -hmm. how would you say how would you say that their purpose of money how are they learning about the purpose of money because mm -hmm. I have my opinions. I want to make sure that okay. they That's align fair. to what your opinion is. Well, they don't have to. They don't have to be the same. But I do think we're I think Rashad, our oldest, who has the greatest ability to understand money and how it works, really does have a, a strong sense of it. Today, I was actually talking to him after church about this local bagel shop. We've been going to this local bagel shop after church for a couple of weeks now, and it's a solo uh, run shop. The guy, Bardo uh, Bagel, shout out to them. He used to bake, I think, in his home for three years, then decided to get a space and recently opened. And now he has a sign on the door that says he's closing at the end of March. And so Rashad and I went to go get bagels today and they were not available because he closed for the weekend. So I said to Rashad, I said, oh, no, that's so sad. The sign doesn't very clear if it's closing for good or, or closing just for the end of March like he did the end of February. But in my spirit, I think he's closing for good. And I was like, that's so sad. And Rashad's reaction was, man, I bet it costs a lot of money to run a business because if you're not making enough money, then you still have the expenses and those have to get paid. And so maybe he's not making enough money to pay his expenses. Rashad is 12 and he totally gets it and doesn't have a business of his own, but he sees me and my business. He sees other businesses and he's always coming up with creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I've shared this before that, you know, my son created a whole convenience store out of our kitchen where he was selling stuff in our pantry and in our refrigerator to his friends and not even giving us a cut. And we were buying the supplies. <laughs> That's something. So I, I think he gets it. And I actually, in my spirit, I think Rashad is going to be a teacher, an educator or an entrepreneur because he breaks down really complex concepts really well. And he loves to find creative ways to do things and sell you anything. I know he sold rocks out of our garden before, sodas out of our fridge. So I am, I'm very eager to see who he becomes. But for Dylan, our youngest, who is less able to understand, I am grateful that we have the resources we have so that we can have a special needs child who has what he needs and gets the services, support, and love that he deserves. And and I will be honest, we don't have every single thing. I'm sure there are plenty of things that we don't even know he could get access to. But when I learn about services he can get access to, I apply and I make it possible. And that doesn't even have anything to do with money, but it definitely helps that we have money. And so for that, I'm grateful. That's that's fair. Fair on Dylan. I think I think being in a position financially definitely helps unlock resources for him. Mm -hmm. A little sometime on Rashad. Oh, yeah. I get I think I think the same kid that'd be like who could really dissect kind of like that that problem statement of like like it's probably the expenses are far exceeding his revenue, which is why he probably shouldn't that I think that same twelve year old is also the same twelve year old. Remember we was on we was in Miami when we went out for lunch? <laughs> and and then I was looking at the bills. Like, All right, look, I'm in Miami. I don't want to spend a lot of money because I was like, it's Miami. So I was like, I ordered the sliders and some fries, eleven ninety nine and like five ninety nine. And I think you had a sushi roll, right? Mm -hmm. And then Rashad looks at the menu and he was like, he's like this, and then he puts it down. And then he looks at the waiter and is like, I'll get the king crab legs. I was like, no, you're not getting the king crab legs. That says, that's a, that's a, that says MP on it. And he was like, what does that mean? I was like, that means market price. And he was like, remember, remember that fresh comment he said? He was like, he was like, dad, like, I don't understand. Like, when I look at the menu, I'm not looking at the prices. I'm just liking, I'm just getting what I like. And I think therein lies the problem. You need to start looking at prices because that's not, like, I, 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 so I thought I shut that down. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember this? Mm -hmm. I thought I shut that down. You're not getting the MP. You're not going to order something more than the, the sliders and the fries that the head of the table is ordering. Wait for it, guys. Wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> I, I get up. I go use the bathroom. The order is placed. And you'll never guess in a million years what comes out. 
What comes out of my head? King Krabs. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so explain to me the gap between when I left and say, Rashad, you cannot get the King Crab like that's MP versus the King Crab that's coming back. Help fill in that gap for me real quick. So the gap, <laughs> which I do believe you were witness to, was I asked the waiter, can the King Crabs be shared? And I said that because I had a taste for them too. <laughs> And I knew I wasn't going to pay market price for one person who was under the age of 10 at the time to have king crabs, but I might pay for two people to eat them. Mm. So when the waiter said it was enough to be shared, and it was actually a really good meal, it was like king crabs, basmati rice, and like steamed vegetables. So not too crazy, not too starchy. And I said, okay, well, let's split it. So... <laughs> That's what happened. We ordered the king crabs. We split it. My son killed those crab legs and he continues to prove every day how efficient he is at eating seafood. So not a dime was wasted. Okay. Um, but we definitely, you know, we splurged. But as I, and then I made a reel about it and it went viral because my caption was basically about vacation funds and how in this family we save for a vacation every paycheck. So when the vacation comes along, the money for the trip, the money for the activities is already taken care of. So if my son wants to splurge on King Crabs once, maybe we can do it. And then we don't have any regrets and we don't go home saying, man, I wish I had those King Crabs. So that was an interesting experience for everyone i don't know if he still remembers it but i definitely do and i still love that reel it's one of the funniest ones we've ever made because my son loves to make reels the thing the thing that i i guess when i when i brought up the topic of like is it a disservice to our boys like in my head and i'll speak for rashad never not once did he did it fathom to him like hey Maybe, maybe we can't afford this, mm. which is, which is, mm. I mean, it's two ways to look at this, right? So it's like, hey, are we, are we in a well enough place where the things that I had to worry about, you had to worry about growing up is no longer a factor for him? Mm. Or is it to the point where we're painting this false sense of reality that, you know, you can get whatever you want at any time you want it? it's a balance i there are definitely certain things that if we wanted to we could buy them over and over again but i've put limits in place for this is a real life example uh, my son likes to eat cookie dough like every single day and now you know they have the cookie dough that you can eat and the cookie dough you can bake and so when i buy the cookie dough i tell him hey you can only eat four pieces a day four pieces right and He's old enough to know math, and yet this cookie dough is not lasting <laughs> two days. And so knowing that I didn't eat any, and you didn't eat any, and Dylan doesn't like sweets, I'm always scratching my head as to why are we always running out of cookie dough in two days? And so, you know, he'll, he, we've created this new practice where there's a sheet on the refrigerator and you get to write what needs to be replaced. And he's constantly writing cookie dough. And today he came up to me and he said, mom, can you take me to the store? I need to get cookie dough. And I said, no. I said, because one, we're going to go grocery shopping about once a week if we go. And two, I specifically told you to only eat so many a day. And you've been eating more than that because if you were eating what we agreed to, because mind you, we agreed to this amount, then you wouldn't be running out of cookie dough every two days. So, so somebody's math ain't mathing. Like I told him that, I said, the math ain't mathing. You're eating it faster than you agreed to. And I'm not going to buy it faster just because I can. So I think he gets that. I think he, and he, had said, he said, okay, you're right. And he walked away and he didn't ask for any more cookie dough today. Now he'll probably ask again yeah. tomorrow. Um, but that's how we tend to put in boundaries on certain things. And I do also agree that when it comes to big purchases, we save for those and he knows that. But then you don't necessarily agree with this sometimes. But I also make Rashad pay for things. Like mm. when he... <laughs> talking about... When he oh yeah, no, I lie, I lie, I lie. You made you made Rashad count out thirty one dollars. He had the I think the last three dollars <laughs> he had to count out in coins. So and, he did that video game. And I took every coin 
okay? <laughs> Rolled it up and put it in my bank because I need him to understand that there is a cost to everything and it doesn't always have to be paid for by mom and dad. If you want the video game and I don't want the video game and you have your savings and you have your birthday money, then you should pay for it. And I've been very okay about that and he's agreed to it and it makes him think twice because there's some stuff that he's not willing to pay for it. And so he says, never mind. But when he thinks I'm paying for it, he wants all the things. Oh uh, yeah, no, I've been, I've been in the, in the, uh, we went to go buy a video game together with some of the birthday money he got. And we walked in, <laughs> he was so you at that time. We walked into the, to the game store and he had probably like, he had probably got a hundred dollars and it was like the Madden game, the Madden 20, one of the new ones, like 2018, 2019. And it was like 69 99. And he was like, mm -mm, that's six ninety nine. I got a hundred dollars. And then he went into like the little bin, and it was like Madden twenty fourteen for like nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> and it was like, let's just get that one. I'll just update the <laughs> rosters to current. I was like, see, <laughs> he, he, the, that, and that, but that's the same kid that also orders market price crab legs. So I was just, it's weird, kind of figuring out which kid is going to show up that day. That's true. And you and I, sometimes we go back and forth about this as to treat, treating him like an adult versus treating him like a kid. And I think that as he matures, we're going to have different moments where we need to exercise that type of judgment because there are some lessons. He is still a kid. He's going to make mistakes. He's going to get on punishment and there's consequences to being on punishment. And then there's solutions to how you get off punishment. But then there are other things that, you know, he wants a $69 game and he has a hundred bucks. He can make that purchase if that's what he wants, but allow him to make that decision. And then that way he decides, you know what? I want to, I actually have a workaround. Rashad is really good about workarounds and thinking outside the box. And I admire that creative thinking with him because that ensures to me that when he gets into sticky situations, he's probably going to be able to get out. Right. But he's still he's still learning he's still maturing as a person and he's still deciding what he values and i i love that i love to see it i don't always agree with his decisions on what he chooses to spend his money on but i i also tell him that you know if he honestly asks me what do i think i'll tell him if i think that's the best use of his money and i will still let him make the final decision i guess but how do you how do you know i guess the the teachings you're giving him about the purpose of money the value of a dollar how do you know it's sticking and let me ask you a question to to assess this okay. if, if rashad has a hundred dollars right now mm -hmm. in your head what is the appropriate percentage that he would save spend to to at 12 years old to see if how you're teaching him about money is working so i would love for him to tie 10 percent, which is ten dollars i'd love for him to save half of what he has left and so then $45. right 45 dollars, and then he can spend 45 dollars. rashad does the tithing pretty on unconsciously like some i used to tell him then i didn't sometimes i still remind him but i don't push it but he is a hoarder when it comes to money to be honest like I don't know if you know this, but right now he has like fifty, sixty dollars <laughs> in, in his little wallet, <laughs> and he he just doesn't even want to spend it. He's not looking to spend it. He's not, you know. Some people get money and they're like, "I gotta burn a hole in their hand because they gotta spend it yesterday." And he's just like, "Ah, uh, I got this sixty dollars. If I see something, I'll get it." Right? But there are times when he does want to burn a hole in his pocket. It's not often, but it'll be like if we're out and he's in the store and there's it's just all these things that he sees that he thinks he wants. But as soon as you make him use his own money, then he really processes it. So I think he's learning. I think he's picking up really well on the different gems that we're throwing. But I think it's because we're putting it into regular contacts in life. We're not making it a class. We're not telling him this is how it has to go. We're living yeah the way that we live and he's learning. I remember the first time back in the day when we lived at the Springfield house, he helped me, he used to help me write checks and send them off when we still wrote checks for random bills. But I remember one time we were in a grocery store and I swiped my card and he said, oh mom, just get something else and just swipe it and then i had to explain to him that there's money on the other end and you have to have yeah. it and he was like really oh okay well then don't just pick up this and, and then he became my shopping cart police and 
I didn't like that too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at the list and saying, mommy, that's not on the list. But we we definitely have come a long way. And he's a great accountability partner. Rashad will hold you to it. Okay. So that's, I do think it's learning. When I go back to those, those debates we have with the guys, I think... I land on, yes, it's probably a disservice as far as the upbringing that he's, that the boys are growing up with now. But I think that's okay. Because I think that shows, it shows growth in we being adults. Mm -hmm. It also shows that, look, like, this is, this is a different time. So I think, like, now there's, you know, now there's the, all the other host of problems that, that kids today mm -hmm. need to deal with. Financial stability isn't one of them. And I think that's a, that's a, a big thing to to provide as a two parent household. Like yeah, I love that. And I and there's a such thing as financial trauma, right? There's a lot of things I do in my business because I saw my mother struggle as an entrepreneur and you know, I was really adamant about hiring a team and getting people to help me so I could make more money because my mom never hired a team and she only hired me and I feel like her business uh, stumbled because of it. It didn't get as large or as profitable as it could have been. And so I don't hold any of that against her because it taught me a valuable lesson before I became an entrepreneur. But I, I could definitely have, see it both ways where I could have been discouraged to pursue entrepreneurship because of it. And that financial trauma can sometimes hurt people in a way where they never get over it. But I'm glad that, yes, we are able to provide for our kids in a way that they that we didn't necessarily have all the time. But we also also make them own up to their responsibilities like last summer our son wanted to quit football and just play <laughs> basketball and that was a big family discussion because we had already paid for it and I was the CFO arguing that he needs to hold up his responsibility and support his teams and the commitment he made and you what was your opinion if you don't mind sharing oh uh, my opinion was I think similar like finish what you start give it all you got that's, uh... that's... That's what I started with. I'm going to call BS on that uh, one. <laughs> you can't call BS on something that was, is the truth. Like, what are you talking about? You We were very adamant. It says, finish <laughs> what you started. And granted, it was kind of like, hey, you're on punishment until you get back onto the team. But that's besides the point. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to let my husband slide on that one. But... I would say initially you had a slightly different opinion and we had to talk as a family with him involved. We allowed him to be a part of that conversation and we said, look, here's the pros and cons to quitting now. Right. We said that here are the pros and cons of quitting now. And then we eventually settled on the agreement that he would fulfill his commitment. But then the next year before we signed him up for the sports he would have to commit again to whether or not he wanted to do them. And I love that we did that because he ended up committing to do them again, but he did it on his own accord and because he wanted to, and he is thriving at football and basketball and doesn't want to quit anymore. But I think at the time he might've had some biases. You were his coach. You were. No, I, I was not his, I, if, that, that time was not his coach, but he, again, your son, at times can be very lazy. And yeah. that was during the time where I was practicing and the practice was running pretty hard. And he was like, uh, I just want to show up for the games. I want to practice. Yeah, that was a part of it. Yeah. But you guys, y'all are tough personalities. And, and <laughs> if we're tough personalities, <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you and him go at it? <laughs> oh, it is World War II. So <laughs> I will admit, me and my mini me, we, we are the same in so many ways. And we handle anger very similarly, but we the, have the, come a long way too. The best thing ever is watch you guys go at it and I just eat my popcorn <laughs> like, oh, this is heat getting good. <laughs> Oh, my, he tries my patience. Our youngest son cuddles and kisses. Rashad is, um, he is a mini me. He is my challenge on some days and my saving grace on others. God bless him. <laughs> All right. Here's your, here's your last, would you rather? Okay. And then I, I want to close out with something. I always ask people on my team. Okay. Enjoy. All right. The last, would you rather? It's deep. Okay. okay. Would you rather never have to worry about money again? Or never be lonely again. Oh, never be lonely. 
never that's be easy <laughs> for me because I'm an only child and I always surrounded myself with friends and family and you know Rudolph you know this I put family first I put I don't Sometimes travel small too much, I don't ahead. travel yeah. small I travel with the village I travel with my village and I am really big about experiences so I would never want to be alone and believe it or not like I love our family I love being together and then I have my days where as an only child I revert to wanting to be alone but the days that I want to be with others are so much more than the ones where I want to be by myself mm. I'd have to see who's there. I would be like, who all over there before? <laughs> I forgot that that question. <laughs> well, you are one of four. And I so... am one of four. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, <laughs> the one of four, that, that village can get a little interesting at times. Oh, amen. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So last question. So whenever, whenever somebody joins my team and they put me in their role to, like, provide mentorship and direction in their career, Mm -hmm. I always ask them a question. Somebody asked me, this, I can't remember who did, but the question I always ask them and I'll ask you is if failure wasn't an option, what would you be doing? Oh, running my business full time, traveling once a month, if it was okay with my husband and oh, making breakfast for you guys every morning. Okay. The, more of like, what, what would be your career per se? Oh, oh, my business, um, okay, helping, be... helping women and men uh, get life insurance and invest in real estate and, and writing. I do email marketing now as a side hustle that has been a gift. I love to write and create stories and ghost write and tell stories. And so that has been my new passion that I've really been uh, feeding into and, and reading. Oh, I used to read so much and now I'm starting to get back to that, pushing myself to read a devotional each month my bible every morning and something fun in between hmm. what about more, you it's a lot more eloquent than my i said i would be an event planner but you said you have a lot oh. more substance behind yours yes <laughs> <laughs> but you are such a good event planner i could totally and see you I, doing I, it I, yes i thought i was you, you pay yeah. attention to detail you put yeah. the experiences in there and you always make sure the accommodations are good so that's where you and i do really well we can we can put on a really good trip and you can do your lane and I can do mine and we we both thrive. So that's good. So, okay. So what'd you think? That was it. Was that too painful? No, I thought that was great. You did a good job. You were definitely a great interviewer and I was glad to answer your question. Okay. What do you think as far as feedback? What do you think I could do better next time? Uh, we gonna work on your lighting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna work on your lighting but i thought you did great and just uh remembering background noise that people will hear that in audio but they won't see it so that's it but as the first it. time podcaster and the first time anyone has ever interviewed me on my show i think you did a great job and i'm super grateful that you said yes to this okay who do i send this invoice to that make like do i send it to <laughs> palm purpose of money like how does this work yeah, nah, nobody is paid to be on the show. Okay, it is well, all because it's out of love and genuine interest. All right, well, I'm putting this on my 2022 taxes as as a 1099. So you can work. You can worry about that part later. <laughs> all right, got it. All, all right. right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this show. If you did, don't forget to leave a five star review wherever you're listening. Don't forget to share it with friends and family or anyone who would benefit from hearing me and my husband talk about our finances, our future, and whatever else came to mind. Until next time, keep building generational wealth.